The Faceless Mourner Read from the Creepypasta Wiki I was wondering if anyone could be able to help me with this. I've been asking for quite a while and I haven't gotten any responses other than people telling me that this is fake or that this is a good short story. It's not a short story! I need help with this! People's lives are at stake! Possibly mine! I don't know yet! Okay, I live out in the country, basically in the middle of nowhere. I tend to a small farm, nothing much, but enough to live comfortably off of. I rely wholly upon my car to get to the city for groceries and to go to the farmer's markets and meet wholesalers who would want to buy a portion of my crop. That is, until it vanished. One day, I woke up, got dressed, prepared to go into town to set up at the farmer's market, and I found that my car was missing. I don't know if it had been stolen or if it just disappeared, but I went to go call the police. And that's when I found out the phone lines don't work either. I've tried to call the police, call my family, hell, I think I called a pizza place one time, but every time I do, I hear noises on the other end instead of whoever I should be talking to, or at least their voicemail. Not screams or Latin chants like I'm sure you'd expect from one of these stories, but peaceful noises. Birds chirping, running water, stuff like that. One time I heard a woman's voice say something in what I think was Italian. She sounded happy, not excited, but at peace. I tried to look up what she said on the internet, but I can't transcribe a language. I... I don't know. Speaking of internet, I suppose you're wondering why I haven't contacted someone that way. Try to tell one of my clients of my situation in hopes they'd bring a car or something that I could use to get us out of here. Every time I go to email someone I know, I get some bullshit response that I'm very, very sure is not being directly sent by them. For example, I sent this message to a friend of mine, Dave, in hope that he could help me out. Yo Dave, someone stole my car. Can you give me a lift to the police station? Thank you in advance, Jerry. This was the response I got. Brother Jeremiah. Be at peace. God is with you now. You do not need to leave your little Garden of Eden, or rather Farm of Eden. I would visit you, but the walls are too thick right now. They'll wear down eventually. All things do. Ezekiel I don't know anyone called Ezekiel! I never get any responses that are signed by the people that supposedly sent them to me. I've gotten emails from lots of other people, though. People with old, old names that make me think of Amish farmers or pilgrims navigating the Oregon Trail. Ezekiel, Hezekiah, Jonah, Deborah, Eunice, the list goes on. I don't think I've ever heard any of these names apply to anyone I've ever known, or even people I've heard of in the last century. They sound Amish. I don't know, maybe a bunch of Amish people are just fucking with me or something. They're all very nice, but very insistent on one thing. That I can't, or as they put it, don't need to, leave. Well, they're all nice, but with one exception. Whenever I try to message one person in particular, one of my clients, Mr. Drake, I get messages from someone calling themselves Isaac. Where all the other people I get messages from are relatively kind and peaceful, Isaac is cruel. Here's an example. Mr. Drake, I'm sorry I couldn't come to our arranged meeting. I'm currently stranded without a car. Would you mind coming to pick me up so I can report the theft of my car to the police? Thanks. Jerry Franklin this is what I got back. Foolish heathen, thinkest thou that thou art do good for the gift thou hast received? Thou hast been blessed, and thou art as blessed as thou art ungrateful. 
Thou wilt burn in the fires of Satan, surely, for refusing to let God into thine black heart. Isaac. I don't understand who any of these people are or what they want from me. Although with Isaac, it's probably a minute to tell me the good news or why they're messaging me. I don't know why Isaac is the only one using Old English either. If this was all that was happening, I think it was a bizarre prank by a deranged cult. I know that it isn't, though. Because at the same time as these occurrences starting happening, he showed up. The person, or perhaps thing, I'm referring to, is an entity that I have dubbed the Faceless Mourner. It, or he, is the thing that I need help with. He is the reason that there are lives in danger. He's about 5 feet and 10 inches tall. He's always wearing the same thing when I see him. A black suit and tie, something that looks like it would be worn at a funeral. White silk gloves, and a ski mask with no holes in it. At least I think it's a ski mask. He might not be wearing gloves either. He's either wearing a ski mask and gloves, or his skin is made of cloth. Either way, I'm confident he does not have a face. Every time I'm close enough to see him clearly, I can see that he has no facial features beneath his mask. You know, how you see the sloping slants of a person's visage under their mask? This guy, I swear, has almost rounded features. He has a pointed chin, a highbrow, and that's it. I can't identify any eyes, mouth, or nose-like bumps under his cloth exterior. It's odd. I can't, I can't tell whether his face is a flat surface or almost rounded. He is also carrying an opened pink umbrella every time I see him. It's reddish pink with a white floral design. The handle is plain and wooden. It's either open or closed depending on the weather but he will have it open on either days where it's raining, snowing, or in excess sunshine. He never shows any discomfort about the weather, despite how harsh the conditions here have become. He doesn't normally move, either. But when he does, he either does it in quick and short increments, or slowly and gradually, like a flower turning towards the sun. And... One last thing... Every time he appears, he brings a corpse with him. Now you see why I said there are lives in danger. I, I'm not sure whether it's him killing them. I'm not even sure how they get here, as I never see them appear during my stakeouts. And he can't be carrying them, as his frame is quite diminutive. They appear differently depending on what the season is. Yeah, that's right. I said season. This has been happening for what I can only seem to measure in years. The first time the faceless mourner came, I noticed a small calendar on my nightstand, a little thing you'd see on someone's desk rather than their wall. Nothing was remarkable about it other than a week's worth of days had passed since I fell asleep. Time passes faster here. Seasons change in the span of weeks. One year here? Last 52 days. Back to the corpses. I always find him standing over them, as if silently contemplating the loss of a friend. The conditions are the same every time, and they change depending on the season. For convenience, I will describe these events as burials. The seasons won't change correctly, and the day won't end either until I either bury the corpse or burn it. I've taken to burning them as this has been happening for so long I'm running out of space in my yard. Although, I've noticed that the makeshift grave markers I prepared for them have been disappearing and the ground leveling after a while. In winter, the burial takes place in a blizzard. The faceless mourner stands stock still against the raging winds and tearing snow. His umbrella seems to shield him adequately, as I've never seen him get wet in either a spring or a winter burial. The corpse is also always frozen solid, under a foot of snow. 
This is probably the hardest burial for me, as not only do I have to dig the corpse up, I also have to find enough dry wood to get a proper fire going. It always stops snowing after I have enough firewood, so I can dig up a proper fire pit and burn the corpse. The faceless mourner often, not always, pulls out a notepad at this point, scribbles something down on it, and tears the page away, handing it to me. He always writes things like, Bundle up, Jeremiah, you'll catch cold, or I'm making cocoa, do you want some? I was actually going to accept on the cocoa, but whenever I looked up at him from reading them, he's gone. In the spring, the burial takes place in a light rain. The faceless mourner stands above a corpse floating face down in a puddle of rainwater. <sighs> About these corpses. The winter and spring ones don't seem to have any wounds betraying their cause of death. If I had to guess, I'd say they either froze or drowned. But why would they be under a foot of snow or lying down in a puddle? Anyway, this burial is the easiest because I can just dig a hole in the wet dirt and lay the poor soul to rest there. I usually put together a few boards or something like that as a grave marker. When I do these grave markers, the faceless mourner walks over to them and pins a note from his notepad to them. The things he writes are... They're really odd. It seems he makes up his own causes of death. Here are some examples. Here lies Uriel, died of sadness. Here lies Meredith, I tried to help her, he didn't. And, oddly enough, here lies Ben. I'm not quite sure where he went. I'll find him eventually. I'm not sure whether he means spiritually or physically, but after pinning the note there, he nods at it and just sort of stands there until I look away. When I do, he disappears. The fall burials are probably my second to least favorite. The mourner knocks on my door. If I open it, he walks away and motions to follow. If I don't, he won't go away. When I follow him, he leads me to a grove of trees that is never there except in the fall. The corpse is always hanging from a tree. There's always a sticky note pinned to it. And it always says, Do you feel guilt? I always do. I don't know why. Because these people are people I don't really know. I vaguely remember some of them being mean to me a while ago, maybe a few years at the latest, but I never wished Mrs. Rossetti, my third grade math teacher, dead. I certainly never hoped I'd find her here hanging from a tree. The corpses are always on the higher branches, and I have to cut them down to bury them. The soil is still good, so I can usually bury them. I normally just bury them in the forest, but one time I did that and found the corpse in the tree again, so I took it into the yard. The person was obviously killed by hanging, and there was a wound around their neck to indicate so. The thing is, how do the corpses get up there? The taller trees are around 20 feet, and the mortar doesn't seem like the tree climbing with a corpse type. A more obvious question would be like, where does the forest come from or go, but I can't even begin to get into that one. The summer burials are the worst. Easily the worst. I wretch thinking of them in May. I can't sleep for more than a few minutes of the last night or week before June. During the summer burials, the ground is cracked like it would be in a desert. All of the grass is gone, and the few trees that are left are dead. The sun is so strong, I actually have to put on sunblock or I will get burned so badly I won't be able to walk the next day. The mourner stands over a decomposing corpse that had been gruesomely murdered. The wounds range from bullets to the head to having their stomach ripped open and all of their organs stuffed down their throat. The mourner writes a note preemptively, pinning it to the corpses. They always have an accusatory tone, saying things like monster, unforgiven, and repent. I don't understand what he means by this. 
I've never hurt anyone in my life. And now this motherfucker starts bringing me corpses onto my property and blames me for their deaths? The third time this happened, I tried to punch him in the face, but with reflexes that would put a cat to shame, he batted my hand out of the way with his umbrella, striking so fast he almost broke my wrist. I can't bury the corpse in the summer. The ground is too hard. Thankfully, the trees are all dead, so I can use them for easy firewood. The bad part is the smell. It smells like every dead thing in the world combined into one big dead thing, and I decided I needed to vomit right then. I always did. The first time, it took me four tries to stop, and when I finally did, I looked up and noticed the mourner was offering me a flask. I knew whatever he had in there wasn't water, but I didn't care. I just needed to get the smell of corpse out of my nose and the taste of bile out of my mouth. I grabbed it and took a long swig. It's, it's hard to describe the taste. It tasted not so much like apples as it did to apple peels. It hardly tasted like anything with a crisp aftertaste. Right then, it could have been ditch water and I still would have drank the whole thing. I handed the flask back to him. He put it in a suit and left in the way he is accustomed. By not leaving until I don't watch him leave. These burials uh, come about once a month, although I have had two before. I've never had two in summer, fortunately. I never recognize many of the corpses except from some of the fall burials. This has been going on for what I faultily counted as about two years. I've buried or burned almost a hundred people now, I think. This... This is all I have. I know it sounds fake, but please, I need help. Does anyone know if I've been cursed or if I'm being haunted? I know there's no logical explanation for this. If you know of anything that could help me, please contact me immediately. I'll leave you with this letter. I got it back from Isaac about the summer burials. Isaac. Please. Just tell me something. I need to know what I'm dealing with. Why is Summer so fucked up? Please, just help me. Jerry. Jeremiah. Summer is a painful time for us all. The ground heats up, and we can feel his anger and hatred from the deep below. Thou may not remember now, but thou buried me. I wish greatly that thou had not. The ground wouldst not be such a terrible place, were it not for the song he doth sing. The song is one of hatred and black malice. It hath no words I can recognize, save one, Jeremiah, and it bodes not well for thou. The word is thine own name, Jeremiah. I will pray for you, but it will do nothing now. Isaac. <laughs>